Hey guys, Henry here. Valentine's Day is coming up, so I'm going to show you how to make spaghetti carbonara and chocolate mousse for two. I tried to make some breadsticks as well, but they didn't really turn out, so I'll leave the links to some other recipes in the description. Or you could just buy some like a normal person. Also, for the carbonara, I made my own noodles, but you absolutely don't have to do that. Box spaghetti works just as well. For the spaghetti, we'll need 180 grams of flour, two eggs, and about a quarter teaspoon of salt, or just roughly half a pound of box spaghetti. For the carbonara sauce, we'll need two eggs, half a cup of parmesan, a quarter pound of guanciale, which is really difficult to find, so you can use pancetta or bacon instead, one clove of garlic, salt, and pepper. For the mousse, we'll need two ounces of semi-sweet bacon chocolate, two eggs, two tablespoons of sugar, three quarters of a cup of heavy cream, a quarter cup for melting the chocolate, and half a cup for whipped cream, and optionally some whipped cream and chocolate for the topping. To start, we're gonna make our mousse. Just a heads up, this is gonna need to rest for at least five hours or ideally overnight, so make this in advance. Firstly, we're gonna chop up our two ounces of chocolate into fine pieces. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure why you need to use specifically baking chocolate, but Recipe 10 Eats, whose recipe I used to help me make this, said you should. Next, we're gonna separate two cold eggs. If you're concerned about raw eggs in the dessert, there are recipes out there that just use heavy cream, but they're really not as good because they're basically just chocolate whipped cream. Also, raw eggs are more common in foods than you think, and they're in mayo, eggnog, and aioli. For the egg yolks, we're going to add two tablespoons of sugar and mix it up. Then, in a small saucepan over medium-low heat, add a quarter cup of heavy cream and all of your chopped chocolate. Cook that for about two to four minutes, stirring frequently, until all of the chocolate is melted and turned into a beautiful, shiny, smooth mixture, at which point you can take it off heat. Next, we're going to make some whipped cream. To do this, place half a cup of heavy cream in a small metal bowl and beat it on medium speed with an electric mixer until firm peaks are formed. Then, combine your chocolate mixture and yolk mixture with a whisk, then gently fold in your whipped cream in thirds. There should still be quite a few streaks left after each step. Remember, we're not trying to fully combine it yet. Then, to the egg whites, we're going to add two tablespoons of powdered sugar and beat with an electric mixer until it forms just over soft peaks. Once again, fold it into the mixture in thirds. The streaks should only fully disappear once the last bit of egg white is added. When you're done, you should have a very light, fluffy mixture. Finally, distribute your mousse between three chilled glasses. This recipe makes three servings because I couldn't get it down to two, so if your Valentine's Day doesn't go as you had hoped, you'll have something to eat while sitting in front of the TV and crying. Tap them against the counter, smooth them out a little bit with a spoon, and place them in the fridge for at least five hours or preferably overnight. Around the time the mousse is done resting, we're going to make our spaghetti. Again, this part is completely optional, I'm just doing it because I think it's slightly better and I had nothing else to do. To do this, place 180 grams of flour on a cutting board or other flat surface and make a very wide well. Then, add a quarter teaspoon of salt and two eggs. If you're using a pasta machine for the first time, use 270 grams of flour and three eggs because you need to run some pasta through the machine and throw it out upon first use. Use a fork to gradually incorporate the flour into the eggs, being very careful not to break the well until you can do so without destroying everything. Once it's started to form a slightly coherent dough, you can start to knead it. To do this, just push outwards on the dough with the heel of your hand, fold it in half, turn it 90 degrees, and repeat. This will probably take about 5-7 to seven minutes, and when you're done, you should have a mostly smooth ball of dough with a few creases. Mine is slightly underdone, but that's fine. Your dough will be pretty tough, so to fix that, we're going to wrap it in saran wrap, give it a little smiley face, that's very important, don't forget that step, and place it in the fridge for 20 minutes, or if you feel like it, up to overnight. While that's resting, let's talk about mousse and carbonara. To be honest, I've never made multiple recipes in one video, so I don't really know how to handle this segment. So I'm just going to do both recipes one after the other. Chocolate mousse is a classic yet simple dessert. It usually consists of melted chocolate, whipped cream, sugar, egg yolks, and whipped egg whites that are folded together and refrigerated. My recipe is inspired by Celebrating Sweets, Recipe 10 Eats, Eddie Crocker, Preppy Kitchen, and Chef Jean-Pierre, whose video I used to figure out how to make it. Huge thank you to everyone on this list, the links to all their recipes are in the description. Chocolate mousse has some conflicting points of view in terms of its origin. Apologies in advance for the butchered pronunciations. According to both Cure de Chocolat and Slurp, chocolate mousse was created by the French writer Menon in the mid-18th century. It first appeared in his book La Science du Maître d'Hôtel Confession. However, mousse had been around for a while, though it was mostly a savory dish, being flavored with things like fish and vegetables. However, both articles then go on to say that it was actually Henri Toulouse-Lautrec's idea to add chocolate in the late 19th century and that he called it mayonnaise de chocolat. I think the most interesting thing that I found, though, was that this one sentence on Cure de Chocolat's article, whether it's piped into delicate pastry shells or hollowed fruits or served in elegant glassware, it's a favorite dessert for countless diners ranging from those who enjoy simple desserts to unashamed chocoholics. It can be found almost always word for word on seven different websites. Get your act together, internet. Now for carbonara. Spaghetti carbonara is a phenomenal dish that traditionally consists of pasta, guanciale, and a sauce made from eggs, parmesan, pecorino, and pasta water. My pasta recipe is inspired by pinch and swirl, love and lemons, pasta evangelist, and an unapologetic cookbook by Joshua Weissman. My carbonara recipe was inspired by the New York Times, Spend with Pennies, All Recipes, BBC Good Food, Damn Delicious, and Chef Jean-Pierre, who once again helped me figure out how to make this, so thank you to everyone on this list, their links will all be in the description. Carbonara probably originated after the Allied liberation of Rome in 1944. It's unclear who actually created carbonara, but one theory that has been suggested by Alberto Grandi is that American soldiers in Italy, who had rations of bacon and eggs, added these rations to pasta, and the dish was born. Though this view has been criticized in Italy, I think it's kind of cool that a dish that's so very deeply associated with Italy might actually be an American invention. 
The biggest controversy surrounding the origins of carbonara is its name. Many theories have been floated, but some of the most notable are that it was given to charcoal burners in Italy, who were called carbonaro, and that's why it's sometimes referred to as coal miner spaghetti in the United States, and that it was created by the Carbonari, a secret society in Naples dedicated to fighting Napoleon's rule of the area. However, according to the Daily Beast, charcoal burning was already on its way out by the time the first carbonara recipe was written down in 1952. Pasta was also, at the time, a lot more expensive, so it's unlikely that charcoal gatherers would be able to afford it. As for the second theory, though many egg and cheese pasta recipes were written down around the time the carbonari were active, none of them have any mention of the carbonari or carbonara in their titles. Let me know what you think the real story is in the comments. Anyway, let's get back to cooking. When the pasta is done resting, we're going to remove it from the fridge, take off the saran wrap, flatten it out, and cut it into quarters. Take one quarter, dust it with flour, which I forgot to do until later, and run it through the machine on the thickest setting twice. Then, move the machine to the next thinnest setting, and run it through twice again. Repeat this until your dough is at your desired thickness. For me, that meant my pasta roller was on five. If your pasta tears or serrates around the edges, sprinkle on more flour, fold it in half, and run it through again. Then, once all of your pasta dough has been converted to sheets, run it all through the spaghetti slicer thing. Congratulations, you've now made spaghetti from scratch! Set that aside for now, but be careful how long you leave it out, because the longer it's out, the more the spaghetti will start to stick together. Finally, we're going to make our carbonara sauce and put everything together. Start by crushing and finely mincing one clove of garlic. Then, cut all of the skin off of your guanciale and cut your slices into somewhat thin strips. Next, place a medium saucepan on medium-low heat and cook your garlic for about 5 minutes or until it's partially dried out. Turn the heat down to low, add your guanciale, and cook for about 20 to 25 minutes or until nice and crispy, stirring occasionally. While that's cooking, we're going to make the base of our sauce. To do this, we're going to add two eggs and half a cup of Parmesan cheese to a small bowl and mix it with a fork. Traditionally, carbonara is supposed to contain pecorino or mondo as well, but I don't really like pecorino, so I'll lift it up. We're going to then hit it with salt and pepper, which I forgot to do until the end. About 4 minutes before your guanciale is done, or 12 minutes if you're using boxed pasta, bring a medium pot of water to a rolling boil. Do not, I repeat, do not forget to salt your pasta water. I forgot and ended up barely salting it in time right before I added my sauce. Not only does it make the pasta taste better, but carbonara sauce also contains quite a bit of pasta water, so it may be bland if you don't. Once it's boiling, add all of your spaghetti. If you made it from scratch, it's going to take roughly 2-3 to three minutes. If you used a box, it'll probably take 8-10 to 10 minutes. Once it's done, turn off the heat, but don't take it out of the pot yet. At this point, our guanciale should be just about done. So, we're going to take some of the melted pork fat and put it on top of the pasta. To be honest, I'm not sure what this does, but most of the recipes I used said to do this. Then, add a little less than a little of pasta water to the guanciale. Remember, we can always add more later, so don't add too much. Give it a slight stir, then, without straining the pasta, use tongs to transfer all the pasta to the guanciale. Mix it up just to disperse the guanciale a little bit, then add your garlic and all of your egg and cheese mixture and very quickly mix it. Keep it on a very low heat, otherwise you'll scramble your eggs and end up with a lumpy carbonara. At this point, if you're fancy, you can add a little bit of white wine. Also, if the sauce is too thick for your liking, you can always add more pasta water. Keep mixing for about 2 minutes to give the egg a chance to cook, and then, finally, we're done. beautiful porky salty flavor it's very creamy the sauce is nice the pork has a little bit of extra flavor the garlic has a third dimension it is beautiful oh my god this is so good the texture is soft and, and fluffy and light while also having a little bit of density to it to really add to the experience the, the flavor is right on point it's not too sweet but it's not you know not sweet at all it's perfectly chocolatey i could eat that for days it was very good the carbonara had a perfect balanced flavor with the guanciale and egg complementing each other very nicely and the texture of the sauce and the pasta bringing everything together the hint of garlic added a very nice third dimension to the whole thing my only complaint was that i let the spaghetti out for way too long before cooking it so there were a lot of bumps that stuck together the mousse had a beautifully light, fluffy texture, and the taste was perfect. Not too sweet, but still quite a bit of chocolate flavor. Shockingly, no complaints there. Also, I know I worded things weirdly there, but leave me alone, it was 4am. So, would I recommend you make this recipe? Well, it is kind of time-consuming, and making your own pasta is a bit overkill in this case. 
However, it does yield fantastic results. I think that, whether you're trying to impress someone you like, or trying to show the person you love just how much you care about them, it's worth it to take just that little extra time, show that little extra care. It is the season of love, after all. Anyway, I'm gonna go eat this by myself now. Bye!